All right, well, should we call the order? And what do we have for additions to the agenda? Um, so we got three. Yep, and they're added in there already. Uh, superintendent evaluation, three months CD renewal, and a TRA. Cover that in super advanced report. Spots. Anything else? Okay, we got a motion for that. So moved. I'll second. Second, any discussion? Any agenda? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both the same side. Okay, motion carries. All right, let's roll into our special guest. How about that? Very <laughs> Alexis uh, Baxley here from the North Coast School Board Association, and we are going to talk about hiring a superintendent. You want you want me to do that now, or did you want to wait until later on the agenda? Whatever your preference is, I wasn't sure. Oh, I had kind of have you there twice. I, didn't, I guess <laughs> I was assuming I put you as special guest, so we were going to take care of that right away, so we didn't. Okay. Hold you here all night. Okay, yeah. you got it. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Okay, works for me. Um, so we kind of have three pieces that we need to cover tonight. Questions, uh, so your interview questions, interview procedures, and then reviewing your candidates. Um, because we may need to go into executive session or we will need to go into executive session to review candidates. Um, I'm going to propose that we do questions and interview procedures first because we would do that in open session so we'll just keep going straight through there yep unless yep. anybody objects okay okay so you should have gotten a handout that was not quite as long as the first set of interview questions i sent you um, but probably had keep going for myself. some underlines and some bolds. Okay, you got extras anyway. I didn't keep one for myself. Purple. Okay, so this was the compilation of all of the. Anybody back there want some? I sure can. Um, all of the questions that you guys selected and sent to me, um, if it is bold, that means more than one of you sent it. Um, I got it more than once. So, what our goal is tonight is to whittle this list down to about 15. There's about 45 here, so, it's, you know, we're down from about 250, so... We did, we did a lion's share of the work already. Um, you'll notice some of them are underlined and italicized. Um, I'm sorry, that looks kind of messy, but I do that because I never know when I'm with folks who are colorblind, otherwise I would color code. And I learned pretty early on that I thought that worked really well and only to find out halfway through my discussion that people had no idea. Um, so. The ones that are underlined, if you remember the, the directions I gave you, I wanted you each to select two, the, two questions that focused on um, people ma management and or culture building. So the ones that are underlined are questions that kind of address that topic. Um, and then the questions that are italicized are the second topic that I asked you to select at least two questions on um, are ones that address community and or parent engagement. So um, I just wanted to add some emphasis to those so we make sure that we grab at least two underlined and at least two italicized questions for our final subset. So um, I kept them in the categories that they were in. Um, I think usually the easiest way to start and to whittle this down for me is to go to the operations management finance section. Um, 
we usually usually when we ask about budgets we ask the exact same question seven different ways and it's probably the one that people get least passionate about how we ask it so it's easiest to strike some from there um, I'm not sure if you want to take a look at da -da 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 -da. 235, um, there's one X that doesn't have a number on it. Um, 250 are kind of our straight budgeting slash budget reduction issues. Um, I'm not sure if anybody wants to lobby real hard um, for any keeping one of those or getting rid of one of those. I'm just going to kind of go through this really quickly to try to save you as much time as possible and cut. So if you love a question, go to bat for it. If you hate a question, same strategy. <coughs> Speak up or don't. Two thirty-five X or two fifty? Anybody? I thought there was a question when we did the spring interviews in the spring summer that some answered well in my mind and some didn't. And it was around more of getting their perspective of how you do the process rather than just the how do you budget, right? Um, specifically around, I think it had something on it like words of like stakeholders. How do you get them involved in it? So I thought trying to find a, a question that would elicit some response around what a person thinks, where we should be spending our money, and how they determine how different stakeholders uh, get input in that would be good. Uh, 235 might qualify for that. And I think you could take, if you wanted to, so I'll throw you under the bus here, Damien. Go for it. Um, the one without a number was <clears throat> your suggested rewrite of that question. Um, I think if you wanted specific suggestions from stakeholders, you could throw in that last sentence from 235 okay. into X. So take question X, add in your second sentence from 235. Um, and get a little bit more of a well-rounded take on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. Anybody feel real strongly about budget reduction? You guys think you're going to be dealing with budget reductions in the short term? Oh God. Okay. On the short term. Okay. And unless you tell me otherwise, I'm going to cross 50 <laughs> off. Um, I'm also going to ditch 251 on you for the time being. If we end up with extras, we can come back. Let me get an extra. Oh, okay. there it is. All right. Um, let's go back up to. Um, Number one, there's a reason we lead off our list with that one as kind of a good intro question. Um, always interesting to hear why people are interested in coming to your district. Anybody have in that sort of general leadership section of what's left after number one? Anybody have some strong feelings about 8, 27, 31, 37, or 45? Probably 37 because it in, intrinsically tells you if the candidate did some homework on our decision. 
and based on what you know about our school system, it's, your response is going to tell you if they did a little bit of homework. And what their perspective is right. going forward. Eight looks like it's one that's picked by several, more than one person. No, nope. so bold is bold. Oh, um, there. No, nope, that's okay. That's <laughs> actually that's a good point. So fifty-five, two hundred eight, and one twenty-four. Okay, gotcha. Which it actually that actually works out nicely because I think you <coughs> the three doubles cover kind of three different categories. Uh, I'm with Jody, I like eight. I'll tell you, I asked that a question very similar to that once, and the answer I got back was smart people like me. It's not usually the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not the way. <laughs> Yeah. Dated a back. Yeah, that, that was that was a that was a rough. Uh, okay. Well, that's I'm, a good one to ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was an effective weeder outer. Um, okay. How about vision? A Forty-seven, forty-nine, fifty, or fifty-one. Anybody love those? Any one of those questions they want to really work for? I like 51. I was just going to say the same thing because it asks exactly yeah. something else. Okay. okay. I'm not crossing anything off yet. We're just marking the ones we like for now. Okay, we're going to keep a star on 55. I like that question, so good choice. Um, 59, 64, and 80. Eight. Thing left on those three that you guys want a star to come back to? <coughs> 106 over 109. I'm okay, not sure right. anybody's doing it super successfully right now. Sure. Yeah, 106 is good. I hope no yeah. idea is right. Yeah. That's maybe a negative Nancy view on it, but <laughs> you, you kind of pick. like with a decision, but right. I'd like to hear somebody's answer to that because sure. it's such a hot yeah. topic in this oh, thing. Yeah. Right. Anything else? 
I think based on the other three that you have in board superintendent relationship, we've pulled out other questions that pretty effectively address these things. Aside from maybe policy development, but or maybe 131 is maybe the only one. Yeah, I guess we maybe don't have a community vision question yet. We've got, I think we've got time. Based yet, on our last survey, I think that maybe looking at community priorities, I like that phrase in there, shared vision. 131. Okay. Um, interpersonal relationships. Anything within those four? Seven, just to see how the person would assess the culture of somebody coming in. How do they assess the culture? And what do they do with it? Then I also like 146. How do you ensure that people are informed, staff informed of important matters? <coughs> just a real big leadership skills. Being sure everybody's informed, right? So. Do you think 144 kind of expands on 146? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, 144 is also a little bit um, adjacent to 51 as well. Um, you know, 51 is, is planning, um, but we're still talking about that collaboration aspect. So let me just put a pin in those. You, Damon, you said 146, right? Well, I mean, I just like that it's very Sometimes, sometimes we make hybrids. <laughs> Actually, almost always we make hybrids. So. Um, okay, community and school relations, 157, 159, and 161. Still looking for, we don't have a whole lot of italics starred yet. I like 161, I don't think it comes out too much in superintendent interviews, but hearing what they say and how they like to engage with students, I think is really big for me. Then within operations management and <coughs> finance, we've already addressed 235 to 251. So just 197 to 223. 
and I would say maybe not 197 because we did star 64 on the front where we talked about demands on teachers, which is, it's not the same question, but we're kind of touching on that same topic a little bit. What was the, the, what did the underlined ones mean again? Underlined ones were talking about personnel management and morale and culture building. I like 223. I just, I'm a big picture person, so I kind of like that that would get the candidate to talk about what they think is some of the big picture topics in the world and that's right in the state. We do have a star on 208. Yes, it's folded, at least for now. I think 208 does it just because it's simple. <clears throat> it's a simply asked question. Yeah, don't have to have a lot of two part questions or three part yep. questions. <laughs> So, if you trust me, <laughs> I will take these back because it's kind of hard to look at them this way and pull them out individually um, and look at the 17 of them together. Usually then once I look at the 17 of them together, I can see which ones are more the same or might might be reworded to kind of combine or not. Um, usually I can let you live somewhere in that 15 to 17 world to amount to about an hour and a half long interview. Um, and I'll put them in an order that creates a flow to an interview so you're not jumping around from topic to topic that creates kind of some natural, feels natural anyway. Um, and then, and I'll do that right away tomorrow, um, and then send that back to you guys so you can take a look at it and provide feedback, and if it looks good, then I'll put it in a format for you that you can use during the interviews. Does that work? If it's comfortable enough with that, take this home overnight, look at it, and if you have some heartburn that we missed something that you really feel strongly about, okay. Or let me know. Do you, okay. Do you need that closing question at all? Or not? Do you want it? Speak now or forever hold your peace. We do always include, do you have any questions for us? Um, oh, okay. It, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's an interesting question. I'm, I'm okay without it. Um, a couple other pieces under questions. So um, I did hand out to you guys again a what not to ask question. You've probably gotten that from me three times already. You will probably get it from me at least once more. Um, <coughs> um, we'll, as we go into interview procedures here a little bit, in talking about interview questions, I said I will give it to you in a formatted way. One of the things that I want you to do when you get it, whether you guys sit down and do it together, whether you have Amber do it for you, whether you have Jody do it for you, um, a practice that I think is really helpful is sitting down with your 15, 16, 17 interview questions and assigning each question to the whomever is participating in the interview. So maybe Jody asks question one, John asks question two, Damien asks question three, and you keep it that same way for each interview. Um, you don't have to do that, that's not required by law, but 
it's really helpful in creating a flow in everybody remembering each time, hey, I, I ask question one, right? So nobody, okay. nobody kind of gets caught snoozing or with their notes or whatever. Um, it also keeps everybody from accidentally going off script. Um, you just, you're focused. It's, it sounds super silly, but it, it is a very helpful tool. Uh, and things tend to go better when, when folks use that. Um, the other piece is you can ask follow-up questions. You have to start with the same set of questions. That's why we do this for everybody. But if they tell you something that you go, hey, I want to know more about that, you are allowed to go off script to ask follow-up questions oh, okay. based on what they say, right? You have to give everybody the same initial opportunity, but then you can ask follow-up questions based on what they tell you. So um, you, you, don't, you don't just only get to ask those 17 questions. You can go off script a little bit. Um, one of the things that I'm not sure we've talked about yet is if you are going to invite others to others, meaning not board members, to participate in the interviews. Have you guys talked about that at all? Uh, we haven't. <clears throat> Let's see, what, what, what have we done in the past? It's usually been uh, our principals and business manager, typically, you know, right? Okay, and there's no right or wrong answer. And we've um, actually had everybody ask questions too. Yeah, and, and I just ask, some boards do, some boards don't. You, it, It's truly up to you. Um, some boards like to have a whole interview committee where they maybe bring in their principals, their business manager, maybe they have a lead teacher that they like to bring in or a community member. Um, totally up to you. You likely know if you were to bring in people who you would bring in. You, most of the time when I talk about boards, they immediately go, oh yeah, it would be these people. Um, the only recommendations I do have if you were to bring folks in is A, if they're going to be asking questions, same thing, apply. assign them questions, go through this with them, make it very clear, right? Because if, if they ask those questions, it's not them that's in trouble, it's you that's in trouble, right? It's the district that's in trouble. Um, just because they're not a board member, anything that they're naughty on comes back to you guys, right? Um, they're not the ones that get in trouble, it's the district's liability. Um, the other kind of most important thing is decide up front how, decide up front before you extend the invitation how you want them to participate and how you want to collect feedback. So what I mean by that is, do you want them to ask questions? Do you just want them to sit in the back of the room and listen? Are you going to ask for feedback at the end? Do they get a vote? Do they not get a vote? None of, there's no wrong answers there. Um, I Generally, I it's okay to give them a vote, however, you are the board, you have been elected. Do not create a committee that diminishes your vote and your authority as the board, right? Like sometimes I have boards that create these giant hiring committees and that's fine, lots of feedback is good. But if you have 15 other votes and you are seven votes and you are truly giving them a vote, well, holy buckets, why were you elected if you just gave them twice as many votes as you have, right? Um, the only thing is, sometimes boards will invite other people to participate and they will not tell them up front what the expectation is and people come in thinking they get a vote and they don't get a vote and then the board picks somebody that was not their first choice and it creates more frustration because they're like, well, hey, you wanted to hear us and now you didn't hear us. And it's like clear expectations up front usually prevents that. So so on these items that you just <laughs> went through, is that something we need to decide tonight? Should we be uh, talking about you it don't, now? You don't necessarily to... have to decide it tonight. Um, we, as, as we're going to go through the rest of the interview procedures, so I am going to encourage you, um, we're going to select, um, I do usually say if we select candidates for you to interview tonight, I'm going to tell you to walk out of here and get those interviews scheduled within the next, not for them to take place, but to have them on the calendar 
and have contacted those people within the next 24 to 48 hours. So what that would mean is you're going to have to know what you want those interviews to look like, right? We're going to have to know, do they include lunch with you? Do they include a community meeting? And so um, you might not walk out if you're knowing that you're going to have XYZ people sit on this committee, but we probably should walk out of here tonight knowing that yes, we want to do that or no, we don't want to do that. Does that make sense? Is the candidate list finalized at this point or is it still open? Or? It closed on the 5th. Okay. Is that ever public information of who applied or is it just who we decide to interview? So, it depends. <laughs> um, and I have a hard time answering this question only because century code really makes a mock of it. <laughs> um, and, and it has changed a few times as I go through this, so, or as I have done this. So we, what we recommend, the law says that you have the choice. If you want all of that to be public, it can be public. If it can be confidential until we go into executive session tonight and you choose finalists to interview. At the point that we choose finalists to interview, the names of the people you interview then become con or then become public, excuse me, and the other candidates stay confidential and go away. They don't go away, but they don't become public. That's what we recommend. The reason that we recommend that is that you tend to get more get more applicants that way if folks they're currently employed and they're happy where they are but they're looking to move up they're less afraid to apply to new places if their boss doesn't necessarily know that they're looking or if their board doesn't know they're looking that type of thing um, it's why there was a period of time pre-2017 where it was all public information that changed and it became all confidential because places were having a hard time getting applicants, not just K-12 schools, but higher ed, all sorts of public entities, because nobody wanted their name to be out there if they didn't know they were going to get the job. And then the law was written poorly, and so two years ago it changed and it became, well, you can decide, and so it's, it's just kind of a hot mess. So that's, that's the long explanation. Makes sense. I mean, there is anti-retaliation laws where the district acted against someone that applies, right? There are, yeah, but I mean, it's also difficult to prove that okay. we're Fair. we're a right to work state, but also principals and superintendents have some sort of continuing contract rights, and it's it's messy. It's really messy. <laughs> I guess one more question is what, as far as a community engagement, what have you seen that works well? So, I'm just skipping to my like second to last bullet point. That's okay. That's okay. Nope, we can work them backwards. There's no good order. So, um, when you do interviews, I usually recommend you at least do one one thing that is not the formal interview. At least one. You can do more than one. So, what my bare minimum recommendation is is a community tour with somebody, whether it's a board member, whether it's a principal, whether you've got a charming guy that runs the coffee group at the gas station and he's just the most charming guy in town, right? Um, generally everybody chuckles because they know who that is in town. I, you know, there's, there's some old man somewhere. Um, but it's just always incredible to me what people will say behind a windshield that they would never say at an interview table, right? Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. And so giving them that opportunity to relax a little bit and have that real personality shine through um, is a good thing. And so whether it's transition time between a couple of interviews um, or just extra time because you've scheduled interviews on different days we really recommend that community tour with a board member, with a community member, with a principal, 
that's bare minimum, okay? okay? That's bare minimum. If you have more time, I would recommend then saying you can do meet and greets with staff. Um, you can do interviews with staff. You can do meet and greets with the community. You can do that. Those, those can be hard in a scheduling sense. Right. Um, I mean, not hard in a logistical sense. You just open your gym up and, you know, put on a pot of coffee and have a pound of brownies and that's it, right? It's not a high-end production sort of deal. But scheduling-wise, it gets a little bit difficult just because there's not really an ideal time that parents are available, that you're not running activities in the gym or things like that. Um, you don't want to try to do four of these meet and greets, so you end up having all four candidates or three candidates at once. Um, everybody's an adult, it's not usually dramatic, but it's just a little bit of a weirder thing when you try to do that. It can work, um, but sort of the hybrid where we do that is saying, okay, if you do a staff meet and greet scenario so you can do it during the day while you're doing these interviews, then I would suggest maybe Again, you, you find a select group of community members if you want to find a way to incorporate community members that can be available during the day that you invite them in during that time, right? And again, you know your community, who, who the handful of people might be that you could pull in that would help create some of that buy-in if you, if you brought them in. And again, it's just maybe a pot of coffee in the teacher's lounge and you know they're just there for a half an hour in that transition time um but yeah i i either say kind of a meet and greet where you just plop them down there for half an hour and staff and those community members can stop in um some districts like to do a little bit more formal interview i don't want to say formal but you know they just tell the staff hey you've got half an hour if you want to go get to know this guy and some staff ask very serious questions and some staff ask things like hey are you a dog person or a cat person do you like the vikings or do you like the packers right i mean it just you know kind of silly get to know you questions but um you know you're going to be colleagues and get to know each other or get to work together so they get to know each other um i think those things are great because you want to you want to feel like you have that buy-in. Now, again, you're setting clear expectations, right? Like, just because you love this candidate doesn't necessarily mean they haven't seen the resumes, they haven't seen the background checks, right? There's more information that you guys have than just their meet and greet. So you want to set those clear expectations, but it can be a really helpful tool in creating buy-in throughout the process and getting you some good feedback. If you've got... Sometimes you get people that interview really well and charm the pants off you, and then they're really stinking standoffish when they're in a room full of teachers, which is not great either. So, sure. food for thought. Um, okay, so once we go through our candidates here um, and select them, like, um, if it is your preference, I will handle sending rejection letters to the ones that you do not choose. Um, I typically wait to do that until I have confirmation from Jody or Amber that you do have your interviews scheduled. Um, the reason that I do that is if for some reason our first choices decide they're no longer interested and you decide you want to pick back up somebody that wasn't a top choice, I really hate for them to get a rejection letter in the mail two days after they've had an interview schedule, so, um, <laughs> because we cross timelines there. Um, we allow about an hour and a half for the formal interview, plus any, usually, if, if you're doing like back-to-back -back interviews, about a half hour for transition time between candidates, plus whatever you think you need for any of the community aspects. Um, you do have a candidate who has declared veterans preference. Um, he has not submitted the documents that you need to submit to declare veterans preference. 
Um, but when I reviewed them, I scored like he had because I just, I don't ever want to get into that argument. If you guys decide you want to, that's your choice. Um, but I don't ever want it to come back on me as your hired contractor. So um, typically if someone declares veterans preference, they need to submit their DD-214 to formally do that. Um, I didn't get that paperwork, but um, we can cross that bridge when we get there if we need to. So, um, and then once we decide how many candidates you're interested in interviewing, I'm gonna tell you to decide. Um, we had selected, I think, the week of the 19th through the 23rd on our planning calendar as that's when you guys were gonna try to do interviews. So let's say we select four people that you wanna interview. I'd say let's identify six time slots for those interviews um, and then whether you want to have Amber try to schedule them or Jody's going to do it. Um, we'll start with the candidate that lives furthest from here and call and offer them the six time slots they choose and then work our way down the list and versus going back and forth with, we're available now, when are you available? Well, does this work? And this is does that work? In the month of March or February? February. Okay, that's going to so, happen quick. It's going to happen right. quick. Now, if you guys want to switch that, now's the time to switch it. But when we did our original planning calendar, that was the week you chose. Um, now, is, now is the time to, to double check on that. But So basically next week. Basically next week, yes. But there's also downfalls on waiting. There is yes. downfalls on waiting, exactly. And that's why we scheduled that week. And that's why we tell you to move quickly. Because somebody else can scoop them up if you wait too long. Right, we have next week, and I suppose if you rolled into the week of the 26th, a day or two, that probably would work. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then we start okay. getting into the state basketball we tournament, roll. which was why we did that, yeah. yep. Okay. Um, okay, so, any questions on interview procedures? That was a lot of information in a hot minute. Well, no questions. We just obviously have some decisions to make. But. Okay, then I am ready to review candidates. If you're re ready to review candidates. Okay. Hey, do you guys have anything else you want to do before we go into that? And I can let you do whatever you need to do until we do that. I'm in no hurry. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then that being the case, uh, we need a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of reviewing the superintendent candidates. I'll make a motion to move into executive session to review superintendent candidates. Okay, motion and second. I'll second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Okay, see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. Move into executive session. So, okay, we are we are back in regular session, and so I guess at this point I would entertain a motion uh, on who to interview. I'll make a motion to interview Cheryl Peterson, Stuart Schneider, J.R. Wilson, and the rest of the group. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion now on this? That sounds good. To me. You guys have any discussion? More discussion with one of our candidates? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Okay, motion carried. We have our we have our four interview needs for superintendent. That's awesome. That's good. Do we want to continue with our other work we need to do on interviews now? I mean, do we want to pick some days, set some procedures on what we want to interview? I would tell you to decide what is important to you in terms of format, and that way you will have a little bit of guidance in determining how many dates 
spaces blocks you need, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, it does. How much time we want to spend yeah. on each candidate during the interview process. So, what are your guys' thoughts? And so, then kind of looking at the interview schedule or what we want to pick and choose to do on this. Yeah, okay. just kind of a sample. We kind of recommend if you decide, you know, you'll see all the things on there a lunch or a meet and greet or whatever that you fill that out, it seems a little tedious, but you go through the process so that you decide, okay, Damien's going to be the contact for Cheryl, and, and thought through that so that you've provided Cheryl with Damien's cell phone number, so that when she gets to town and she can't figure out where to turn, she's got somebody to call, or, you know, maybe it's Amber, or, or you know, whomever. So that you appear organized because you are being interviewed just as much as they are. So that's basically a, a greeting host. Yeah, yep. Who's, yep. Who is going to meet them at the door when they come in and, right. um, you know, welcome them and escort them to the interview room? Show them where the bathroom is in case they need and to rest. Try to keep that the same for every. Same for every candidate, same person. Trying to Ideally, because then that person knows it's their job. Um, yep. You know, it doesn't have to be, but just so long as you've thought through it, you know who's doing it, and they know it's their job. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd, I'd suggest that, I mean, the ideas and the logistics of this are probably very challenging, but we, at, at a minimum, do a staff social or staff meet and greet. Um, I'm not sure if that can be somehow coordinated that public or allowed at that time too. I imagine the two building scenario makes that challenging. But I think we should have a full discussion and see if we can, or does that kind of need problem solved here? Um, well, not necessarily. Mm. So here's what I would say. Actually, I think your two building situation might help a little bit. Um, you could do you could do the interview first. Um, give them a meet and greet here. I'm assuming you probably do the interviews here, right? Um, give them do the interview. Do a half hour, forty five minute meet and greet here. Um, load them up with somebody so you're going to get that windshield time between here and taylor yep. um so it wouldn't be one of you maybe it's maybe you've got i don't remember your name i'm sorry jesse that's okay. it's jesse because that's your school right so you're going to be the windshield driver and take them over and they're going to do um your meet and greet over there um and then you know you you've got that built-in buffer for when your next candidate arrives and you're going to schedule your next candidate meet and greet prior to the interview because then Jesse's got some time to get back mm -hmm. if Jesse's going to participate in the interview, right? So you can sandwich them that way a little bit. So you might only so that's want like you're doing two interviews. Right, you day. might just want to do two interviews yeah, per day. Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to yeah, squish right. all four in in a day that way, but I mean, I, I like that idea. I mean, I, that seems like a logical, okay, so try and plan it during the school day so that the, those meet and greets work. Or right after. Yeah. Or maybe right at the end of the school day, too, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, and you maybe know what time slots would be good time slots for your staff to be able to stop in. Um, if you have a, you'll want to think about if you have somebody available to step into classrooms to give teachers a couple minutes to step out to participate in that meet and greet if you don't have you know, if it's a lunch hour or a recess, the high school is a little different, right? But in that elementary setting, um, sure. Yep. The, just the logistics that you want to think about there to make that accessible for your staff. Let's see. 
it or you bring in an extra sub for the day that they're going to rotate through or something like that. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and as far as the inner committee, I don't know, just at minimum we allow a couple of teacher representatives. Is, uh, well, everybody, any of them. Interviews are open. The interviews are wide open. Be there. It's, it's a public okay. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unless you have it in the middle of the day. If you have it during the school day. Well, right. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Which, if we're going to make this meet greet work, it's going to I'll have to have some, some during the school days. That's right. Yeah, they are open meetings, so anybody yeah. could participate. Um, and, and that's honestly, that's one of the reasons that we recommend the meet and greet part because it's almost impossible to, when you're trying to get this many interviews done during that can chunk of time. Can interviews be recorded or not? Yep, yeah, it's an open meeting. Well, you can you can record them, you can live stream them, right? All the things you do with your normal meeting, you can make them available that way. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we need to actually get some names filled into this on, you know, greeting host, school tour host, or you know, things like that? Well, so I would say look at your calendar. It does does next week still work to do interviews? Are there two to three days next week that all five of you board members? Okay, well, we'll just speak for Dwayne. He'll be available. Because he's on vacation. He now, doesn't so. have a choice. He's yeah. told. <laughs> I'll tell him if you need me to. I think right now, Wednesday next week is, a, is a more, Wednesday morning. I have something. Monday afternoon. <laughs> well, are we trying to... I mean, that's a good point. Are we going to have to do them in the daytime anyway, where it's more limited for people to... Are we going to try to do them in the evenings, or two and two evenings? That's how you want to do the meet and greet. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm okay either way. I mean, yeah, I can do, you know, okay to do late the afternoons, meet and evenings, and, the, and then meet and greets will just mean you're, you know, you're not during the school day, but your teachers could come back, or, or, or that kind of thing. To come back. Is it too much to ask to do a meet and greet lunchtime and right thereafter and then hang out for interviews in the four o'clock time frame? Well, do you want to try and do two per day or? You're thinking an hour and a half interview? School wise, there's going to be a couple lunch windows. Well, so. Not all lunch, we'll have the same lunch. Could you do. Um, How long does it take to get from here to Taylor? Ten minutes. If I'm not even trying. Jesse, you're right. I live like you live. It's an emergency answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you could flip flop meet and greet. So if you wanted, if you wanted your interviews to be in that four o'clock time schedule, you you'd. You might miss lunch hours, so you're going to have to accommodate your teachers for meet and greets, but you could be hosting one candidate here for a meet and greet while your other candidate was in Taylor, and then flip-flop them, right? So we could, we could do flip-flopping meet and greets from, let's say, 2 to 4, right? Um, and, oh, and or start one a little bit later, right? So then you're going to do that four o'clock. Now you're going to have somebody that's coming late, but or you could just start them later. No, if you start at five, you're over by eight. I guess that's not unreasonable. Depending on if they're going to travel home or just yeah. You know, to find somewhere to stay between here and wherever they're coming from. Or, you know, yeah. Well, if you started at four, you're done by theoretically by seven, but it could be still be eight. So, you know, I would say an hour and a half. You should pretty easily have an interview. I know. I've had. I've seen a lot shorter too, but 
That kind of says something about your candidate sometimes, but. but I think I'm going to start at four and then wait too long. I don't know we did late last year, did we? Or summit related. Yeah. 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 Six, it was more summertime, yeah. so it doesn't feel like it doesn't right. have start by right. Right. But, but we also later. didn't. We did have all those other things. Right, right. Just kind of. Mm -hmm. You got a little too fast. Yeah. 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 So. Well, uh, I mean, first we got to narrow it on days, I suppose. That work. Well, the first and second is open for me outside of that, I guess. And then 2021, uh, Tuesday through Friday, I'm good. If we're avoiding the morning, then the 21st is morning. So I'm going to Tuesday through Friday. Oh, um, good. Whole week, I can. Whole week. Day. Yeah, you said Wednesday through Friday? You said Just Wednesday Friday. and Thursday. My, my Tuesday is slammed. Friday is. come up with at least three days right here three or four days we should I think at least three would be good okay. if you can get I'm kind of trying to break down a schedule for you here to see if you could get two in one day if you can get two in one day I would say three days okay would work um, well the other thing to keep in mind too is I think it was with Cheryl is she gonna be here that week yeah, that, that would be a question, and so I think she's who I would start with to call first, um, and if you find out not, um, then, then you'll kind of just have to pull a second day. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't hurt to just, if there's a day the following week that works for all of you, yeah. is to it pull next that. Week? Monday, Tuesday, I'm open next week, too. Or the following week, the 26th, right now, looks good. For Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I guess. Um, but that week, unfortunately, I go back to Harvard of all places to take a class. So I'm a little bit right. Yeah. Harvard. Harvard. Uh, um, I don't even know what time in the evenings I could join remotely, but if we're late enough, I bet. Well, that's Central Time. So. Or is that Eastern? No, Eastern. 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 So yeah. Be two hours yeah. Yeah. So it actually helps. So if I can join remotely, that's fine with me too. So we got two solid days for next week. How about, how about the 19th of that week? Is that too soon? Well, there's no school that day. Oh. Oh, your meet and greet will be. Let's put that soon. Or maybe it would work better. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. I, I'm, it's fine with me. I'm not, yeah, Monday. The 19th. Yeah, I'm probably driving back from skiing with my wife. Get <laughs> 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 earlier. <laughs> That's the current plan. I don't know. We'll see. Are you? How far away are you going? Just, just the hills. I know, right? But hey, what do you do? Let's <laughs> get some snow right now, so we'll see. Oh, that's crazy. Great. So I think you could do two in a day. You'd have overlapping time, right? Like if you staggered them between the meet and greets and the interviews, so you'd put your teachers in a position where they'd have to choose between doing the meet and greet or the interview, but both interviews would be after 
four o'clock. Um, so, or it would be four o'clock or later. So, have that opportunity if they wanted. Um, thank you. Do your first meet and greet in Taylor at 2.15. Allow 45 minutes. Leave Taylor. 3.15, do the Richardson meet and greet, 4 o'clock, interview the first candidate, allow an hour and a half, give yourselves 15 minute break. Uh, at 4 o'clock, start the second candidate with their meet and greet with Taylor. 4.45, they'd leave Taylor. 5 o'clock, while interview one is still going on, they'd start their meet and greet here in Richardson. And then be hustling at 5.30, you'd be hustling candidate one out the door, um, and at 5.45 you'd start interview two, be done by 7.15, 7.30. Take some coordination. Are you going to be here to help us plan all that? No, but I'll, I'll have a phone call with Amber and we'll walk through all the details. <laughs> Sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. So we should, can you send that to yeah. us or somebody yeah. so you can yeah. we can kind of follow that. Yeah. So yeah, if you booked like cleared one thirty to eight o'clock on your calendar. Wednesday, Thursday. Well, I don't know if they make it. Okay, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Start with that. Okay. Amber, we'll chat tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got for us? That's it. That's all? Yeah. Amber and I will chat in the morning. Are you going to call the candidates or are you going to call the candidates? Um. This is the point where I hand it off. I don't call the candidates because if they have a question, I want them, okay. once they once they schedule their interview, right, I want them to call you guys if they have a question about what time or how to get here or things like that because I am not no longer the best person to answer those questions, so I don't want to muddy those waters. Does it, I have no recommendation on which person is better, just, who can get it done fastest? Probably Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I I guess all kidding aside, I think that would maybe be good just for Amber to, to call and stuff. I don't want to call them and start chatting with yep. them or something nope. like that, and then I'm talking to them when That's I shouldn't be. A okay. Um, I will say 90% of the time it's the business manager simply because they can get it done fastest. Okay. <laughs> Do we pick a, a day? The following week for Cheryl if she's not here if you can I think it's a good idea you know because I, I right if we won't know talk to her she says I'm not even here not that, right. that week what about the week after right yeah. just so we have a backup plan right yeah. like I said I'm pretty open that week it, it was you are open I am well, to make it work the later the email just to make it work somehow okay just keep class if, if, it, if it has to be that's what we'll roll to Did you choose the date? You just all said you were. You just said we're all open. What works? Twenty first to twenty second. Twenty six. Well, twenty first, twenty second was next week. Next yep. week. Let's say that I mean twenty uh, six or twenty seventh because we might yeah. as well get it done right away. I agree. So so it's better, it's cool yeah. the twenty seventh that Monday. Okay, so twenty seventh and the following. Okay. It's a lot. <laughs> All right, so 21, 22, 27. Okay, well, thank you for spending your Valentine's Day with us. <laughs> Would you like a treat? No, I'm on the road. for the road, because we should probably open no, these and disperse these because this needs to happen.
I told you guys last time, my husband and I got married, and the following Monday, I took about 40 legislators on a tour of the oil field. So he is well accustomed to oh. what he signed up for. So. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yes. perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Plates. I will. Maybe. I will. Oh, sure. Should we take a break real quick? I yes, guess. absolutely. You guys want to take five here? And it's a restroom. Grab a Set a record for Starting the consent agenda. First item is our minutes from last meeting. through this stuff fairly quickly unless somebody just you know yell to stop here if it's if you want to look at something close yeah. I already looked at all of them earlier today yeah. so yeah I, I did too I guess otherwise let's just yeah. just keep rolling right on through the board bills they're not attached on there but you'll have to click on the oh the yeah. full uh consent agenda folder sorry yep. got it And did anyone see anything you have a question on in board bills or want any clarifications there? That was too major. Amber, was there anything on board bills you need to point out to us? No, not this month. They were all pretty standard bills. Okay. I did have one question. What was it? Um, there was, I thought it was something that was duplicated as you have three tabs at the bottom too yeah no there was one it was the JP Morgan C list but I thought there was listed twice maybe maybe it was something else Oh, yeah, well, if you think of it later, yeah. on, so we'll go back. I see them the other day. Oh, Balance sheet. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a question later on the CD renewal. County taxes are due this month, so district property taxes are going to change significantly, I'm sure, after by next month. <clears throat> so there's state aid 
state aid is in. Expenditures. Okay, same thing I said for over fifty percent of our budget, or fifty percent of the way through the year. More than. Activity fund. What do we do with some of those, like class of 2020, class of 2019? Like, is there, does that go somewhere eventually, or does that just keep sitting there? In the past, it went into, like, we asked if they wanted to donate or something. Then we had some classes this year when we contacted them. Um, the office helps me contact them to see if they want to donate something in the school. Then we did check with the auditor because they wanted to donate to students outside the school. But according to audit, it's best to just donate in the school for anything like in those students' names or sure. um, anything that way. So I, I still have some messages out to three classes. Um, I went to the last three years of what they would like to do with it, but I only got back to two of them about the audit information. I still have to get back to the third one. And then if they would like to donate anything in the school, that's where that extra money goes. Okay. In the past, like, there's been like paintings in the hallways, or they've updated things in different parts of the school or the gym. Um, there's things done on the football field by different sure. classes. Yeah, I just thought like 2020, 2019, I just thought there was, uh, I guess 2019's cleared out. But. Yeah, but so, yeah, and in the past, whatever was left, if they didn't want to donate, went to those kiosks. Well, then Adam went and put on all the class pictures online. So now it's a question, do we need a kiosk or do we not? Because now people can get it anywhere. So I guess that's the decision that you guys need to decide down the road because, I mean, technology changed so fast during that time that anyone can get it online now. So do you really want a machine in the building? I don't know. That's something that you guys can decide if you'd like. Okay, any questions on any of it? Any of the consent agenda? Just want to go back to anything? We're good? Okay, I'll call that a motion to approve. So, so okay, motion by Damien. I'll second. Second by John. Any discussion? Yeah, hey, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion to leave. All right. All right, activity director's report. Okay, so this is Mason reports um, on track coaches being requested. It's fairly similar to last year's, except with some bigger numbers. Um, she talked to Mr. Kohler about sharing between junior high and senior high. So um, right now there's 35 kids that said that they want to be in the junior high program. And there's 22 kids that want to be in the high school program. Um, so with adjustments according to student numbers, Sean Alder, full-time high school. Ryan Kohler, full-time for both high school and junior high. However, it would be kind of a special contract because practice is together. So it depends on how much separation, like which meets he's going to. Um, I did speak with Mrs. Mason and Mr. Kohler regarding that, to just you know, building so much because there's so many track meets. Um, we were able to get Mr. Brenthauser to come in so that it's not just um, doing the sub plans, but teaching. Um, but they still did cross out certain meets where less kids were gonna go where he wouldn't be needed so that he wouldn't be out of the building as much. So I do think it would work fine. Um, Thomas Fondrick, full-time junior high, part-time as high school pool. Carrie Dorman, full-time for junior high only. Alanda Krebs, three days a week for both high school and junior high. Selena Marquette, three days a week, both high school and junior high. And then Mark Kiley, three days a week for both high school and junior high. And those are all your specialty coaches. High school track practice begins February 26th for those in not in winter sports. Junior high track practice begins March 11th. Elementary volleyball practice begins March 7th. Um, I think you guys have down below 
possible to approve someone leaving the coaching? Is that on there? I am. Mm, okay. Yes. So she would like to report that Heather Joppa would like to take over elementary volleyball this year for Jen Frank and student coaches interested to help out this year are Ashley Christensen, Olivia Vaughan, and Nevea Bronco. <coughs> Principal report, Mr. Sure. Um, we in February, or sorry, January, our word of the month is leadership, so we wrap that up. We had our assembly for it. Um, class of the month was Mrs. Disroot's class, and again, that's just a specials class of PE and music recognition. Um, our word of the month throughout February is integrity, um, and talking to students about um, what integrity is. You know, it's, it's making that right choice, even if you're by yourself, even if it's a hard thing to do. Um, even if you're the only one doing it. So really preaching that and um, what I've been trying to emphasize with it is um, integrity is something that you should always do. It's not making that right choice one time, it's making that right choice every time you're given the opportunity to. So um, sharing with that and again in my videos I'm having them share some examples of what integrity means to them and how they can apply that at school or, or at home or outside of the building wherever they're at. Um, last time uh, I presented that um, high quality instructional material grant. So the Friday after that meeting, um, some teachers and I went to Bismarck and we kind of had, we were kind of showcased some curriculums that were aligned with the science of reading. Um, we will be meeting next week just to give an update on that process. Um, <clears throat> I've reached out and we've had three different um, companies give us physical sample materials. So that's, we currently use Wonders, the 2017 copyright. So. Um, we got the Wonders 2023 copyright, which is aligned with the science of reading. The older version that we currently use is partially aligned with that information that I presented last time. Um, we got physical samples K through 8 for um, Amplify CKLA, that's just another reading curriculum. And then another one called Wit and Wisdom. I was only able to get physical samples for grades 1 through 3 on that. They limited my scope to just three grade levels. Um, but we've been, we've been looking at it, um, same with six through eight, the teachers at this building too, they've been looking at the materials that they were given. Um, so I'm gonna get some feedback from them. Um, I have a meeting scheduled with that team that went to Bismarck, so we can kind of sit down and kind of work towards the next step of, of what direction do we wanna go, and then, then we can start looking at pricing and things like that. So um, I will have the next step and all that further information presented to you at the, at the March school board. But that's where we're at now. So we spent some weeks looking at these materials and we're gonna, we're gonna evaluate it and get some feedback on it. Um, way back in November, Senator Hoban was supposed to come to Taylor for that blue ribbon recognition. Um, and then they canceled and then we've just been waiting and waiting and waiting, but they called me on Monday and uh, the Senator will be out next Thursday um, at 10 a.m. Um, the, they, their office encouraged me to invite anyone from the district who would like to show up. So he'll be at Taylor 10 a.m. the 22nd, yeah, 22nd, um, to, to do kind of an in-school assembly with the kiddos. They'll do a flag raising, um, just kind of, I, th I think there's a little bit more to what they're going to do, um, but they're going to keep me up to date on what their plan will be. About, about a 45 minute window is what they told me that he would be here, so. Um, one quick change to our school calendar. Um, I failed to look up when Thanksgiving was for next year. So I had it the 21st and the 22nd for Thanksgiving break. That will be moved to um, the 28th and 29th, which is when Thanksgiving actually is. So <laughs> I would prefer to be home on Thanksgiving. So we made that just adjustment to the calendar. So if you think back, we, did, we shifted that week down. So it was a 21st, 22nd off, followed by a PD on that next Monday. We just shifted that down to the Thanksgiving week, so it's still 28. So school Monday through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. We'll come back to school on Monday for a PD day. So um, if you'd like a copy of that, just let me know, and I can give you the updated version of that. Um, just a couple quick testing dates uh, for the kiddos at the high school. Um, there will be six seniors taking the work keys test um, the 27th of February, and then the ACT is scheduled for April 23rd at City Hall just to give them a new, just a different environment for their testing, and that'll be paper and pencil as well, which um, which they'll do better at with paper and pencil versus the computer-based. So that's all I got. I was short and sweet this time, but I promise in March I'll talk like four times longer because I'll have a lot more stuff. <laughs> that's all I got for this one. That's a, this is a good meeting to be short. <laughs> that's, that's true. It worked out. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Dr.
Dr. Goldwell. Um, we just finished up our mental health training for professional development. Um, there was a survey in the fall, and the teachers picked what they felt that they could use, but also what they could use with their students. The sessions were Emotional Intelligence 3, Emotional Intelligence 4, which were split up by two days, and then Transparent Communication in the fall, and Making Positive Habits in the spring. So I did make the board members copies if you would like one. Um, but it's really about um, not looking at the negative and making positive habits. Um, social studies curriculum, the last two PD days we reviewed social studies curriculum K-12. through Two programs that we looked at are TCI and McGraw-Hill. Mr. Kohler, our social studies instructor, is heading this team. At this time, teachers are leaning towards TCI as it was much more condensed version for them, kind of planned things out for them and met the needs of both the teachers and the students, but nothing is concrete yet. Um, they're supposed to think about what maybe curriculum meets their needs the best and then we'll resurvey that out and see what they would like and go from there for the curriculum. Um, 5 through 12 participated in student engagement survey on February 13th. I think elementary did also. Um, when all that information comes back from the state then the survey team will present it to the board. We had five through eight spelling bee on Wednesday, January 31st. First place winner was Draven Potter. There was a tie for second place between Larry Max and Camden Huff. Third place was Raylan Gullickson, and the alternate is Coulter Reeves. And they did a really, really good job. It was a ton of fun. Um, they will participate in the Stark County Spelling Bee at Hope Christian Academy on February 21st. And then Wednesday, February 28th at 12.50 p.m., we will hold the four through eight district um, geography be at Richardson. Mr. Kohler just kind of began the preliminary round for questions right now. Um, after COVID or kind of during COVID, they canceled the National Geography Bee, so we just continue to just do our own at this point. So, that's all we have. Thank you. All right, let's keep rolling here. Old business. So, we are all the way down to finance. Collaborative bargaining update. Um, we're still waiting on Horseman to get back to us. So we have no updates to hold on. That's surprising me though. What, what uh, can we do to well, spur them along? Horseman is actually waiting on somebody else to get back to them. So oh. actually, we're waiting on someone else. They, they have, there's an issue with how you can actually use cafeteria plan money as far as annuities go. Like, can you actually use it to put into an annuity or do you have to take it as a cash option and then put it into an annuity? There, there are there's some IRS regulations. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else on that? That was, no, that's it. Good. Okay, all right. Um, operation and maintenance. Okay, um, I'm going <clears> to <throat> piggyback TRE HVAC with the Dunn County School Grant Program and hopefully oh. add a, a time to look through each of those. Um, if you look in the TRE HVAC uh, folder, if you click on that, you'll see that I, I uh, put together the Richardson Taylor HVAC system. Um, we had to do a report for DPI to get accepted, actually, our school construction uh, application approval request is what I'm trying to spit out. So I went and filled that one out. That's what you're supposed to do initially. We were all done with that project, but Mr. Tesher still wanted it. So I took care of that one, and then I put together the next one for the TRE project. Um, I also put the guidelines for DPI for their approval requests for construction, construction, and I also put North Dakota Century Code in for school construction. Uh, the threshold for um, improving school con or improvements to your building is two hundred thousand. So we could actually get under that two hundred thousand mark, and then wouldn't have to put it out for bids. Um, and then just to clarify, the the thing you put in for permission was saying, hey, we're under 200000 You know, they give us a, their blessing to do the project. Is right. Kind of 
Um, and if you look on their guidelines, it's like 150,000 to 300 some thousand. Um, if you're in that range, then you have to submit the report. If you go over that, then you have to do like a whole facility plan and all that stuff, which we had to do when we did the new construction. Um, so I kind of jumped the gun last meeting when I had the board go ahead and request RFPs. So what I would like to do is just whatever action we take now is going to take precedence over what happened last month. So um, I would just like the board to approve that application request for construction. And then we'll start at the beginning the way we're supposed to and then send that off. And then once we get permission from them, then we could go ahead and proceed. And I do, I did put the proposal in there from um, Sierra, uh, and that's under two hundred thousand. Uh, and then piggybacking off that, the Dunn County School Grant Program. Uh, and if you look in there, you can see that we've gotten this in the past, and you can use it towards school construction your bond debt, um, school construction loans, and in the past we've always put it towards school construction loans. So that means you're putting it in sinking in interest, that sinking in interest fund, and then you can't use it for anything else. Um, my thought maybe this year is with the TA, uh, TRE HVAC, um, around $200,000 maybe you would want to submit it and use it for that project. That, it may not be, and you can see it's 243000 So I was gonna ask him if, hey, can we use this part for um, the HVAC and then the rest put in the sinking and interest is what I was gonna go for. I have a question or into uh, Mrs. Whittingham from uh, Dunn County. She's oh. out of the office till 19, but she's gonna get back to me. And I'm just gonna ask her, hey, could I modify it to say this, if that's your guys' wishes? But I thought that might be a good way to yeah. uh, do that. Um, because yeah, I then, I, I, um, I guess you could look at it the other way too, if, if you put it in your, well those, because we have the 10, building fund and the 12 miscellaneous so I guess if you put it into the sinking and interest fund then that would free up some of your building fund um, money or does that money have to go if, if you go to sinking and interest have to go to buy down principal and it can't necessarily replace your payment that, that's what I understood from past years I'm I had asked Amber about how that worked but Sure. That, that's I mean I'm just going off of what I because I, I thought I understood because I thought we looked history. into it one time that we wanted since we were getting that money we wanted to make an extra payment and we couldn't make an extra payment oh is that right well, maybe it wasn't payment maybe it was just towards principal and you still have this your payments still remain the same even though you're just buying down principal oh okay maybe that was it I'm not sure but that's something we have to check in. So there's so basically with this Dunn County money, there's several uses it can go into. Then is buying down principal, doing a construction project at your school. A new construction, and then what was the other one? Is it a third one? School construction or bond debt repayment. Bond debt repayment. So basically, they're saying use it toward your facility. Right. Right. Got it. Um, the, Will you need that clarification before submitting this application then? Well, actually, I went ahead and submitted it. And then I was looking at it today, and then I'm like, hey, maybe we could use this for the HVAC system. So that's when I sent a note off to Mrs. Whittingham. OK. And so there's a chance, yeah. Yeah, that we, we should be able to kind of adjust, adjust that. Change that, or adjust that. Um, Kildeer is a pretty good recipient of this yeah. one. Okay, so that so going I, back to yeah, going back to <laughs> the TRE HVAC. So if I could just get 
board approval yep. for the uh, DPI school construction approval request. Okay, so we want to start there, and then from there, we're going to, after we that, we're going to go into a discussion on whether we want to actually just use city air or go for an RFP. Okay, so starting with, or you know, back to, yes, submitting to DPI for permission to do the TREA HVAC. Does someone want to make a motion on it? I'll make that motion. Approving that submission. Okay, I made a move. I a second. I'll second. Move and second. Any more discussion or clarification on that? On what we're, what we're doing. Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 All the same side. Okay, that motion carries. So is that the direction you want you want to look at is using that for the HVAC? I think so. The, yeah. the grant? Yeah. The grant. Yeah, I, yeah, why not? Right, because our other option is, yeah, we got Esther money coming, and you can and may or may not be able to use that on Esther. I think this is a more cut. Yeah, this, this is, is straight. A yeah, it's a straightforward process. Thing. Yeah, okay. the Esther seemed yeah. like it was a lot more of a hoops and. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do it with Esther. Yeah, right. Well, you would, but it'd be a major hey, you too. Yes. Okay, that's what I will shoot for. Then. And then, so then, after we get permission from DPI for the Taylor project, are you guys okay with going with City Air, or would you like to open this, advertise, and open it for bids? Because that's what we had, we had talked about in motion last right. meeting was doing a request for proposal on the project. However, after I got into looking into Century yeah. Code and the thresholds, and you know, it's it, I always thought it was 152, but that's DPI, and then you go to Century Code and it's 200,000. So. so we're not required, but we just can't. Right, we but do we good. want to? I mean, do we want to say, hey, let's, let's put it in the paper, let's advertise, let's take some more bids? Or just, I mean, CDI is a good company. Right. Do we have all of the specs and whatever, so it's going to be an apples to apples comparison, or is it going to be a, here's our facility, tell us what we need? I would, if we advertised, I would be more comfortable if we wrote some sort of a spec, kind of based around what city is right. doing. But I think we should maybe spell it out a little bit so that you know it's not wide open. It's hey, right. okay, we want to put an outdoor unit, air conditioning, heat, humidification, and then duct it into the into the gym. And how many uh, um, bids did you get last time? Two, I think. Two, two or three. three. Well, did we even get one from City Air though? Wasn't it HA? On this? It was HA Thompson. And yeah, I don't even I don't remember getting, 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 getting one from City Air. No, I don't it was HA Thompson, and then it was somebody else that was like four times the amount oh, yeah, of HA Thompson. It's a crazy high one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, instead of going through all that, you could just send HA Thompson right. and call them up and Absolutely. say, hey, right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's Because then that. we don't have to constrain right. to all those so, timelines. Right. That I think would be. The best route is to send it to them because the other one, like I said, it was like four times the amount of H.A. Yeah. Thompson's and bid. You know, with this project here, which H.A. Thompson and Son did, um, it took them quite a while to finish up with the humidifier and all that yeah. stuff. And when I talked to the guy who was uh, hooking up the humidifier, he was all the way out of Minneapolis. Oh. So, I mean, they were sending. They didn't have guys around here. They had to send them out of Minneapolis. And City Air has been our go-to yeah. for go-to for fixing stuff. Yeah, well, that's, that's yeah. I'm not supposed to just go with them. Yeah, I'm not either. I, we've had experience. City Air has done well for us. I, I mean, they, they call them up and okay. yeah, they're there. Yeah, let's just. I, I mean, I'm okay with that too. I, yeah, I mean, if, I just want to make sure everybody's. Yeah. Kind of in agreement that that's okay. And, yeah. um, I'm looking at their proposal, and I, I didn't bring it with me, but I've got a bunch of notes on my desk about what they're actually providing with some of this, some of their bullet points, and I, I want to visit with them a lot or two before we award it. But first, we need permission. Yeah. Then we can talk about awarding, and we can do that in building committee. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, we don't need a motion on that, too. Right. No, you approve the project or application, so that's a good goal. 
Um, okay, Carl Perkins, Carl Perkins. The Consortium. Um, there's information in there about that. Uh, New Salem requested to join um, the Heart River CTE uh, Center. So we kind of had to move around a little bit. Um, Darren Siemens from Hedinger was more than uh, willing to let us join their consortium. So we're going to uh, be part of their consortium. There's no change in funds. It's all based off of your enrollment and stuff. It's just who's handling all the money and stuff. So all I had to do was Mr. Nelson um, asked me to send him a letter requesting to go from the New Salem Consortium to Hedinger. So I, I, yeah, I see him put the email and stuff. Yeah, that's it. Straight to the point for Mr. Nelson. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and then I talked about the Donovan County School yep. eSport grant. Um, they keep sending stuff out to schools about eSports grants through Consolidated. Um, so it, it includes um, obviously the game plan for eSports, but it also includes um, drone racing. And so I did do a webinar and Dwayne and, no, Joni popped on. And we kind of just asked them a whole bunch of questions and stuff. Um, we, didn't, we just kind of wanted to bring it up. Um, some schools are totally for it and joining, and some schools are not because they're worried about their sports programs. But I guess he answered a question that you can do both. So I guess we just brought it up for you guys to have some conversation. Um, I think we're going to miss the grant proposal for this year, just so you know. Right. But, but it was I'm mostly sure there just will be another one. There will be. I'm yeah. sure, but it was just to start the conversation if that's anywhere anybody wants to go or not. So yeah, so it was just myself and yes. Dion. Dwayne had seen it on a, another. I think through consolidated. Probably right? through consolidated. Yeah, through consolidated. Yeah. Consolidated. Yeah. Consolidated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not even so much worrying about the grant at this point. I, I kind of wanted to bring it up because it was an introduction to me on esports. The webinar we we watched because you know my first thought was you know really esports, but. He presented it. Yeah, he did a good. The young guy that presented did a good job. He's out of Dickinson. Um, just basically informing us of what esports is. So you got esports and you got drone racing. Two different seasons. I think they're both kind of in the spring. Mm -hmm. you know, a couple different times. Um, I didn't realize what a good thing it was for kids. It's another option for kids, but it's an option for kids that don't do. You know, may not want to play in athletics. Um, and maybe they're not the speech kids or the drama kids, but there's another group there maybe that, that wants it, but anybody can play. I mean, you can play basketball and do esports if you wanted to. It, it can still work. Um, you know, I guess, so, you know, my question kind of would be, does this board want to see that presentation or, or have uh, the young guy at Dickinson? I'd have to look it up. I mean... Um, yeah, I know. Anyway. Um, you know, are you guys interested in looking at it and, and have a discussion? And you know, maybe in a, a year or two, we you know implement something like that. We might look at it. Another option for something for them to do. And colleges do offer scholarships. And they're getting to be more. A lot more. of scholarships. BSC is doing yeah. it. Fargo. Yeah, like, we asked him a list, and he said he'd send us a list if you guys want to see it too. Because we, yeah. I couldn't believe how many colleges actually offered scholarships already. I think DSU is doing. That. DSU already does. Yeah. Gannon Karski. 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 But anyway, but yeah, it, it was amazing to me that yes, you get a scholarship to college to play esports. I don't know why we wouldn't look at it. Yeah, and and, and the, the the grant is you know one or like a thousand bucks or something or two thousand. It was two thousand. But and, and esports might cost you, you a little bit more than that. So there, yes. there will be ultimately a little cost to the school, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. It wasn't. Yeah, you're so. not. You're Did not doing a ton of traveling because you're doing it online. What it would. Yes, he did. Yep. I, I don't remember it offhand. He said he would send it, we could present it all, but it was kind of mostly like what your interest was first. Yeah, yeah. And then we could go from there. I guess I was most concerned that, um, you know, our kids are spread so thin, but yet on the other hand, they might pick this and something else. So, or a kid that's not doing anything right now might have an something. option. Right. And that yeah. was kind of why we looked at it. But, um, it wasn't too time constraining either, like no, practice really one to two hours a week. Yeah. 
so you could fit well, anywhere. Obviously, they can practice at home too. Which I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Yeah, now they're going to say I'm doing homework when they're doing. But the drone racing was cool too. But yeah, that yeah, was pretty cool. Yeah, that was it. And the drone racing actually had um, some some practical aspects, or can it can lead to a career. Mm -hmm. These days, it's too yep. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some sort of a CTE thing. Mm -hmm. I don't so. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if we want to look at having Mr. Karski present in a, you know, in, in two months or three months. I don't know. Whenever we looks like we might have a lighter board meeting. <laughs> I don't know when that'll be, but not next month. <laughs> okay. So that, yeah, that was all on. Okay, our uh, three month CD is up for renewal, and Amber has some info. Um, so I put the current rates in there. Um, they are a little bit lower than what they were three months ago, but not a whole lot lower. But yeah, they just need to know if we want to renew it for how long. Sorry, I gotta go to that. We made about. She didn't have the exact dollar amount because today was actually the, the last day. Yep. Uh, but she said it, we made about roughly $2,700 on interest in the three months. So, so and we staggered those, right? Yep. So now we'll have another one come due in three months? Yep. And then, another, did we do three? No, just two. Just two? Yep. Just two. So then we would want to maybe roll it to a six month? Possibly. Right? Yeah. And that would keep that three month rolling? Yeah. And, 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 and Amber, we, do we need the cash? I mean, it doesn't look like it. No, I, I wouldn't okay. say right now we do. Well, yeah, because there's a big jump from three to six months here. Right. You can get go from a 4.1 to a 4.8. I think a six month makes sense. Yeah. We'll just keep it rolling. Yeah, because I mean, they're high they enough for it to still make sense. I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 4.8. Yeah. I'll make a motion to renew it into the six month CD. Okay, good motion. Second. I'll second. Second by Shannon. Any other discussion on that? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion carries. Okay, policy. Okay, for <clears throat> um, okay. our Office of Civil Rights report, um, we noticed that our bullying policy was not up to date, so we need to amend that um, to meet the OCR requirements. And basically it was, um, what did we have in there? We had to add gender identity. Gender identity had to be added. <laughs> okay, is this a first reading? Or? Um, I, oh, okay. I'm using policy BDA again. <laughs> line changed if we're looking at the 2024 on the second page the first bullet protected status. Okay. So now in, including sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. That's what added had to be added in there. And this was something that the state's requiring? Civil rights. This Office of Civil Rights. So federal government. Yeah. to um, submit a link to this document that we have it on the web and that it meets the, those requirements of gender identity. 
but so we have to have a link on our school website to this this particular policy part. Um, actually, yeah, if we put it on the web, then Jesse and I add the link in the office of civil rights report that we need to finish. And then so, so it oh. shortens time for them. We say we have it, and then if they have to see that we posted it on our website, so the link is there for them. So are we given notice from them, or is this just some way identified in the review of it? Or? Yeah, after going through the report, when Jesse and I did our sections and then went through the district side, that's when we just cross-checked and then emailed Mr. Bouts and he did the update. And this is, tell me again what this report is for? The Office of Civil Rights. So there, so we do every year? Yes. Thank you, President. Okay. Um, basically, you have to report how many suspensions and then different categories of students, whether it's special ed or okay. whatever. Or race or, or whatever. Race or gender. We also have to report the different races and sexes in each of our math and science courses to make sure that we're showing equality. So. Okay. It's a really fun report. <laughs> okay. No, but I got the point of discussion on bullying policy as a whole. I think it's been maybe misinterpreted on the reporting methods, reporting options for students and community members. Um, what we need to do for clarity or if we need board action to amend but it, it's a number it's like point number two reporting options and on page two um, it's been said to me a couple times that no we have people have been told that they have to file a form to report bullying yet our bullet C in our policy says file an oral report with any school staff member um, I guess just a point of clarity of either we need to follow that policy or amend it, one of the two, but somehow this has been some confused, confusion, I guess. So an oral report with any school staff member then triggers a reported which is basically talking to any school staff. Correct. So. And then we basically give them the form so they can fill it out and give us the information. Okay. It's part of the investigation. It gives us documentation. It also gives students more outlets and more comfortable with certain staff member. Sure. Which I would like to keep because, I mean, some students connect with a certain teacher and they're comfortable going to say, hey, this happened. And before you go amending these policies, I would recommend you check with the school board before you do that. No, I, School board association, you mean? School board association. And I'm be, because not usually, suggesting that we amend that. I'm suggesting that we have a discussion about that. It's in there because it's been unclear, I think, to some. Okay. But that is reporting method in our policy. So when somebody reports something and they verbally or whatever, um, are they automatically given a form to fill out or is it something, like how, do, how does that process work? Okay, so do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer that? Direction from your school lawyers is that we go back up to, that's okay, that's okay, the part that says, on the first page I think, um, under A, we have to go over those four sections. Um, if it doesn't meet those sections, it goes under regular matrix level discipline. If it meets those sections, then a full investigation is allowed. And actually, that's when the sheet should be filled out. Yeah, after administration decides if it meets or not, based on um, those sections, and on then those the sheet's three given out afterwards. A, yep. B, and C. Yeah. 
but to, but to clarify that that sheet can be filled out even by a school staff member with the with the student asking or telling them how yeah how they want to fill that they can fill that out and then we can look at it and say okay yeah. well it doesn't fit the definition of bullying so then we're going to go to the discipline matrix sure but then we just use that as right. documentation so I basically say the, the counselor uses okay the sheet right so the you know if, if the student you know maybe the victim doesn't want to write it out they can orally give it yes. to the staff member yes. and say this is what's going on yeah okay yeah and, and it is confusing until someone goes through the process i i do agree with damien that it's confusing for parents and kids because until they do the process and it's long and extensive process you would think that it could be done quicker but it's very extensive of course video feed and things like that make it go really quick sure I'll make a motion to amend policy, bullying policy, KCBA. Would you also like to waive the second reading? First reading. Yeah, on the first reading, we'll waive the second. <laughs> okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second on that? Second, any more discussion on making that change to our bullying policy? More discussion. Okay, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion carries. We have another policy. This one is for the Title I monitoring. Um, I missed this one. We need to have this one in place. In order to be compliant, okay, and this is federal fiscal compliance. Yep. Is this a policy that we do not currently have? Current or no? Okay, so this is completely new. And again, something that's required. Yes. Yes. What's the quick summary on this one? It just goes through and talks about how you're going to track your funds and how you are going to record um, destruction of records and retention. Okay. I, I see it. I got it. And even though, and I asked the question, even though it says in there that um, <clears throat> the Richardson Taylor School Board proves the authorization of the superintendent as the authorized representative for all those programs. You still have to turn around and do it every year. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Gotcha. You have to get it in the minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's annually report show. Review and approve application for Title One. Move to adopt as presented policy HBA federal fiscal compliance on the first reading and waive the second reading to expedite the policy adoption process per, per board policy BDA. All right. A motion. Do we have a second? A second. Motion and a second uh, to adopt board policy HBAA. Any more discussion on that or questions on that? The one statement on all employees paid with federal funds shall document the time and effort they expend towards federal programs in accordance with federal laws. Is that kind of burdensome? Is that kind of this? Was this handed to us by you? This so is the when, we, yeah, when yeah. we do the Title One monitoring, so um, anybody who's paid with the Title One monies, um, they need to submit, like for the first semester. She needs to sign an assurance of time that says so and so will work this schedule this semester. And he has so, to do the same thing. So it's, it's pretty, again, you know, it doesn't get real granular on hours and things like that. Well, you have to submit a schedule. Okay. Interesting. 
But you already know those people and right. any other hours. So it's not too well actually the title report is huge. Oh, time consumer, right? it's, and it's all time consumer. The other thing with um, was the inventory, you know, and I in in the past I've learned not to purchase anything with federal title money as far as um, material stuff because then it becomes a nightmare because then they want to see your inventory list and then they want to, after five years you need to do this and you need to do that if, and and we don't get enough money anyway I mean we're using it for instructional purposes but um, but we still needed to have the policy in place right. to meet the requirements okay all right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion or questions on this? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, personnel. Um, superintendent valuation, second one is coming up March 15th. It needs to be done by, and our next meeting is the 13th. So I'll just send out the link again. Okay. I have uh, three letters of resignation in there. They're all classified employees. I don't know, does the board usually, I mean, I was, I, I don't think you don't, need to, I don't think we'll are they under any sort of contract? The coach is, but it's for one year. Um, and we do have the policy where, I think it's DKA, where the superintendent is in charge of the classified staff. Yeah. So I just, I didn't put um, board action required behind that because I thought it was classified. And yeah, I think it was just for your information okay. anyway. Sure. And then you know that um, Miss Frank is uh, resigning from the volleyball and then Joppa is going to take over. Take over. Okay. Uh, we, we did post the food service. So we're short-handed here as of now. Um, and then Mrs. Harnish uh, is not going to drive Route next year. So we'll need a bus driver for Route 11. Any questions on that? No. Transportation, Route 14. Um, Stottingers inform me that they will not be contracting the route next year. Um, they would be willing to sell us the bus if we wanted it. Um, it's, I think it's a 22 passenger, so you, you still have to have the Class B endorsement passenger or whatever to drive it. It's not a 14 passenger bus. But can't take a couple seats out and call it a 14. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we could have Mr. Isaac do that. Shop. Um, so yeah, that's information on that. Okay, and so then Bernie's finally going to retire. Yeah. So, is, is it a bus that we we should look at or be interested in? Or I would think so. It's in pretty good shape. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, Bernie got me this weekend. And she said it's in good shape. They just put new shocks on it. <laughs> They'll fix the tear in the seat if we want. And none of that. But it it's, does it's go across. We should look at fifty-eight cattle guards. Include the knitted yes. seat covers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she would include that but um, yeah maybe it should be looked at I, yeah and I'm sure it would be reasonable so. and then Mr. Paulson had a question about storm cancellations yeah oh. I was wondering if we should have some sort of action on a time frame that's a reasonable expectation for communication on on uh, School. Yeah. May I say something first? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, usually I have, I call school before, by 5.30, before the bus is leaving. I am in communication with the bus drivers. The, Bernie is my number one go-to. If she, if she thinks it's really bad out, she gives me a call. Um, on that particular morning, um, I was in contact with surrounding administrators. Um, everybody was going normal. I looked at the road reports. 
didn't see them that bad. Happened to get more snow here in this area. More snow in this area. Um, so I was just going to go as normal, and then I got a call from um, Dwayne saying that, hey, there's it's it's pretty bad out there. I think you should not have school. And so I that's what I went with. And I knew it was late, but I sent out the text to the bus drivers. Not one of them complained. They were ready to turn around and come back because they were like, man, the roads are bad. So it's just one of those, that's the way it ended up. Yeah. Well, nor normally you got a bigger area that's, you can rely on other superintendents or what other schools are doing and you can help decide. But you and then, got drilled in this area, almost on a north-south line. And then I sent sent them back and then bus five got stuck on interstate because there was a semi that jackknife so then she was sitting there for half an hour um, so i mean it's just kind of the way it shook out usually if that's not the way it's done i don't want to tell the bus drivers to turn around and go back but that, that's the decision fair enough i guess all i'm after i fielded a few calls on it and what i thought would be good by policy is to have a time frame when at least some communication is posted because what you have is parents sitting there and you know you're kind of like well are we gonna have it or are we not we're waiting for a call we're not waiting for a call all right let's go so just so that our community can know that there's a time frame where all right I'm gonna expect that if I hear nothing by this time yes we do you, we you expect forward. to hear it before your bus comes Correct. Well, I mean, I guess well, that's usually to me, I'd like that communication in our minutes is, hey, this folks, was a you can one expect to call by this time. This was a one-time occurrence. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so it has been in the past, always before the bus to go out. But, but that's not. I think we're getting way late. I'm not trying to. I understand it. The unfortunate situation. It's the way it went. I'm just saying that it, I think it would be good to have a policy with a time frame where you as a parent can expect, even if that communication is, look folks, we're, we're still assessing. So you can make a decision well then. You know what I should have actually done is I should have actually went two hours late and then assessed it, but sure, I didn't sure. feel that it was that, that you know. Again, all I'm after though is that. should we have a time frame where- Your policy book is gonna be this big by the time you're done. I'm asking for one policy, Mr. Bowles. One simple policy, such as expect communication by there was such a such time. I don't, think he's, I don't think he's necessarily talking about this particular situation in general. I think he's talking about as a I whole. Guess, yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> I think, I, I don't know. I think every situation is a little different. So to say it's going to be set in stone that it's going to be this time is difficult. Because then if it doesn't happen, now you're saying, well, if the, your policy says it has to be this. And, yeah, but then something happened and, oh, geez, no, right. we really need to cancel. And, but it's after 6.45, what do we do? Well, we're gonna have to go. And then are you putting people in, you know, I, I don't know. I, don't I know mean, I, I get the yeah. fact that no, no, parents want to know. I, mean, it's, yeah. I just think it was a no. difficult situation that was very but it secluded been, to our area. It really hasn't been a problem in the past. It's not an ongoing right. problem. So should we make a new policy just for a one-time thing or? Oh, I guess I was see, just after some see communication, it's... just just a yeah. just a something that our community members can rely on that by this time I should hear something. Yeah. Even if the and communication is hey, we still say it's usually pretty good. I, I've never had a problem with communication before. I've always found out early. It's just yeah, this time it didn't work out. Let's not panic and make a new policy. I mean, let's wait and see if it. You know, we get further down the road and it starts to be a, an issue or it's an issue for people. Should we look at a policy then? I guess I was looking for a, just a simple action that we could do. I think we get a little further with this than no, necessary. But, yeah. Is there, I mean, I'd say, is there a certain time yet in mind? Or? Well, I thought that would be up to discussion of what's reasonable. I mean, I guess I'd like to know, like, what is our first kind of time? 
students are boarding buses, that would be kind of relevant information, or what is a reasonable time? 530 is when you usually I text me. I have to contact the bus drivers before they leave. And I guess I'm talking about, at the I, I, I'm not so much concerned about getting in the business of discussing with the bus drivers, but just a community, a, a time frame for the community to expect communication. I would say it probably would normally happen by, if you're talking bus drivers by 530, you made the decision. Takes a little bit to put the text together or call that in. So, Adam, if it's on the web page, takes just six. a minute or two as soon as I get a hold of them. And then, at the instant he sends me a link, we pop it out. Probably happens by 6 30. Oh, yeah. 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 As soon as we get word, we put it out. And I, I think it. I don't think this was going off, but sure. We'll make a motion that uh, the policy be enacted where a communication is posted to the community by 6.30 on uh, school status during the inclement weather. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second for that? A second or more discussion? So we need a second first. I just don't think it's necessarily a good idea to set a specific time because if things can change so fast that it's difficult to say it has to be by this time and if it's not we're gonna have school because that's essentially what you're saying if you don't hear from us by 6 30 we're having school yeah I'm asking for just some tough. communication so I'm not saying that I would well, be narrow it down to, to even if the communication is look we're still assessing so we've heard something because it's as simple as when your parent, when you're sitting there trying to figure that out in the morning, well, are we really in school? And if you get a message, okay, I can count on 6:30. We should hear something soon after. Get a message, then it's like, well, we're still assessing. Okay, now you make a plan. Well, Email. you go to work. I'll stay here. We'll figure it out, right? Not everybody takes off, and then you're turning around and you're. I guess I don't see it for seeing a big enough, being it being a big enough problem to make a policy about it. My, that's my opinion. Yeah, I gotta agree with that too. Or let it shake out a little more if we want to continue the discussion. You know, that's fine too. It's kind of an ad administration thing. I mean, they're they're running the school. You know, we should put it out. I agree. But it all goes out on the all call. Right? Yeah. Email, yeah. email text. And sometimes, honestly, I've had some responses like, hey, someone said we're not having school, but I didn't get, I mean, sometimes it's spotty. So once in a while, someone doesn't get it. It has happened. And even staff member, you know, like almost always it goes, but I mean, we've worked out a lot of kinks with that program, but I mean, once in a while it happens based on who has Wi-Fi. And, and, and Sarah what, does a great job on putting it on the she does. Richardson page. She's, for her, I text now. her and Adam right away. Um, he gets the same text I do, and then I text Adam and her right away, and he takes care of his no, I agree. I think the communication devices are, are fine and good. I understand that piece of We still have a motion. We die for a lack of second. Okay, we'll move on. RACTC report. That's Dwayne. He's not here. I have heard nothing. Um, I he talked to me. Oh, sorry. and they will have their course list ready here soon. Um, and they're supposed to get us a list as soon as they're done. And they're looking at like the beginning of next month, like their course list for next year, because okay. they plan their instructors according to their numbers. So that's coming, will be offered to the kids during registration, that and ECE dual credits, everything oh, that way. Yeah, because I think I did see something where 
even though we start a week later, we can still get the kids into it, into yes. the courses? Yeah, we're here anyways. They can come get their computer start okay. and be on their timeline instead of our timeline and yep. then meet their requirements that way. Like, it just gives them more options, even though they just have to start a week early, week and a half or so. And then they would end on time, but then they would start immediately after Christmas break when we have about a week and a half to two weeks on our calendar for our semester. They would start their new classes right away. It'll work out. Fine, we'll figure it out. Okay. Great. That's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, RESP report. If you click on that link, you'll see that uh, there's the survey results from um, <laughs> the merger. So what we need to do is, uh, bottom paragraph there, uh, to approve the merger of RESP, G, and WEC into the Western Edu, the WERC, effective July 1st, 2024. That would be our motion. And then I have to send that out to RESP. So our, our motion and vote becomes our school's vote into the... RESP. Right. When do they need this by? Um, she wanted it as do this at your next school board meeting. So most likely February. Oh, okay. I got it the 26th of January. So. What was the one thing? I don't know. Does anybody have much background info on this? I mean, is that yeah, I talked to the director about it. He claimed, I mean, this was clear back in October, I think. He talked to me about it being explored. And it was just simply a, a look to consolidate services to provide more variety of services across the greater region. Um, the only reduction in staff would be just himself. To, to go down to one administrator um, and then uh, from there I, you know I asked the questions of if this would thin out the staff to where they didn't feel like they could provide the, the resources which they claimed no that would not be the case and if anything they were getting some more staff by some efficiencies of the funding so I didn't see any reason nothing raised a flag in my mind of why to not do it so Anybody else have any questions or, or clarification on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, if not, yeah, we can entertain a motion to approve the merger. So move. Okay, we got a motion and a second. I'll second. A motion and a second. Uh, REA merger. Any more discussion or question? Okay, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Right. Vote with the same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Next meeting, March 13th, or probably sooner because we're going to have there'll be official board meetings for those interviews. Yeah.